the Quinn Mar Show. This show is brought to you by Bing Pot Trivia. How many times have you been to a trivia night where it just felt like somebody reading questions? Well, Bing Pot Trivia prides themselves on bringing high energy, dynamic hosts to every event. The show leans heavily on visual elements. Their questions are designed to make you laugh or roll your eyes, while also challenging your knowledge on pop culture, high school science, culinary arts, and everything in between. Their typical show runs five rounds, including a photo round, general knowledge on pop culture, riffs on different game shows, absurd 50-50 questions, and a super sweet music round. Check out bingpottrivia.com today to book your trivia night. Again, that is a bingpottrivia.com. Tell my boy Danny that your friend Quinn sent you. All right, let's get on with the show. My next guest is someone who is on my TV literally every October. From playing Jamie Lee Curtis's son to Debbie Reynolds' grandson to trapping Jim Varney in a treehouse, Quinn Singh is basically a legend magnet. He's worked on screen, behind the scenes, in the theater, as well as co creating his own entertainment company. But don't forget my personal favorite, playing Dylan Piper Cromwell in Disney Channel's franchise, Halloween Town. It is my pleasure to welcome to the Quinn Mar Show, Jay Paul Zimmerman. Jay, what's going on? Hey, how's it going, Quinn? I, I'm good. Thank you so much for coming on here. I'm I'd saying I'm pumped is an understatement, but I, I, I am excited. So yeah, thank you again for, for coming on here. My pleasure. Uh, we were just talking before we started recording. You just saw SpongeBob the Musical last night. How was that? I did, yeah. Uh, it was really, really fun. Uh, it was uh, a lot different than what I don't know what I was expecting, uh, but it was a lot of fun. There was a lot of audience interaction. Uh, they like throw beach balls out in the audience at certain points and stuff, and just the, the the costumes were so wild and the performances. You know, everybody playing the different characters. It was it was a lot of fun. They looked like they were having so much fun up there. I love that. I was just saying to you that um, I saw a billboard for it like a month ago, and I, I said to my fiance, "We have to go because as a kid." SpongeBob was my favorite show. My first email address is I love SpongeBob a lot at hotmail.com. And <laughs> she turned that down pretty quick. So oh, no. I'm I'm pretty envious of you that you got to see it just because, yeah, I mean, it was my favorite show. So that's awesome. Um, if you get a chance, I highly recommend it for all ages. At, at this point, I might just go alone. I don't know. I, I yeah, want to see it. So um, just to start to get into it, um, it actually kind of works talking about theater and a musical. Uh, you were born in Albuquerque, but I know you moved to San Diego as like a little, little kid. And you, I read somewhere that your father was in theater and you had said he was also an inspiring film actor. So as a kid for you, what's like your earliest memories of your dad being in the theater? Um, my, my earliest memories, uh, are probably just, you know, always being, I was always present there when he, he would like bring me to rehearsals and stuff like that when he had to be watching me, uh, as a young kid. And I remember, uh, I think he was working on, uh, the little shop of horrors. Uh, and I just, that's one of my earliest memories is like hearing that mu the music from that musical and being sort of in that environment with people performing it. And, uh, you know, I don't know, that's probably what did it for me was just kind of being constantly in that environment that I just started to soak it up and, you know, start acting things out on my own. And that was uh, one thing led to another. <laughs> who, who did he play? Uh, he was uh, he was Mr. Mushnick. Oh, OK. So, he, yeah, that's that's sweet. I actually did. I was in the in the musical in high school and we did a little shop of horror. So that's oh, that's great. That's, that's obviously sweet, yeah. it's one of my favorites. Uh, oh, it, it, it is reasons. so good. <laughs> I'd, I'd never heard of it before until uh, my buddy that directed it in, in high school was saying, hey, we're going to do this. Do you want to be a part of it? So I said, sure. I watched the movie. I was like 100%. So I was the plant. Uh, I was, And then I was also like a, a background guy as well. I was just like oh, cool. one of the, uh, like the people on Skid Row. So, yeah, that's that's cool, though. That's that's sweet that um, that's played that played such a big part because clearly however many years ago you still remember that. Was theater his like – was that his full-time job? Um, his full-time job was and is uh, lawyering. Wow. <laughs> he, is a, he is a lawyer slash actor. Jeez. And he's still very active in the theater community in Albuquerque. Wow, good for him. That's that's a lot to take on. Yeah. Wow. And do you know, like, for him, where that where like the love of theater and like acting and stuff came from? Um, I think it was something he probably i would assume he grew up or he's from new york originally so i would assume being around that sort of uh, uh that sort of culture 
uh, can be very, very inspiring. Uh, and I know he, he studied and did a lot of it in high school and college, but I'm not sure. Um, uh, he's never told me what that like defining moment was that made him yeah. want to be an actor. <laughs> no, but like you said, New York, it's kind of, if you have any interest in like acting or anything like in the business, even if you're in New York, you're kind of, it's, it's pretty much thrown at you. Right. Yeah. So, um, now, like you just mentioned about like your earliest memories of being like a little shop. So like, as you grew up um, a little bit, how often were you spending time there, like in the theater with him? Was like a lot because obviously, like you said, like when he was watching you, you had to be with him. So like, what kind of like behind the scenes stories and like other things can you remember from from those days? Oh, it just, you know, meeting, um, you know, just being there at the rehearsals and watching the process of, of the show come together. Like it wasn't just going to see the show. I would see it sort of from the beginning. Um, and I would get to, you know, I would get to meet a lot of the actors and the, and the artists and behind the scenes people involved. And they were all very nice to me. They, you know, they just did not mind having me around and, you know, learning things. And, um, so yeah, that's pretty, that's, that's pretty much where a lot of, I have a lot of behind the scenes interest as well. So I'm sure that's where, that's where that came from is being, being around that again at an early age. Now was your mom in show business at all? Um, sort of, yeah. My mom, uh, uh, is a musician that has played the violin all her life. And, uh, she used to play for orchestras and play for in, 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 uh, in, in orchestra pits for musicals. And that's actually how they met, uh, was doing, I think it was, uh, the bluegrass is the name of the show. I'm not too familiar with that one, but my dad was in it and my mom was uh, playing violin in the orchestra and that's how they met originally. Wow. Okay. That, that's really cool. That's, I mean, that's a show business family. If you ever heard of one, wow. That's, yeah, pretty much. That's awesome. I mean, so you're basically bound to be a part of it in a way, right? Like if, I mean, obviously if you didn't want to, you wouldn't have, but right. with, with the blood you have, you kind of, that, that was it for you. Um, it definitely gave me a good place to start from. Yeah. A hundred percent. Cause like, I mean, you're also, you're also able to lean on them if you ever like had any questions and stuff. Not everybody has that, right? Like if you right. needed advice and stuff, like, you, you you had a, a little bit of a leg up which which, which obviously helped you uh, later on yeah. now as a kid like what were your favorite kind of shows or like movies and like what were you like as a kid were you into like comics music oh yeah movies, absolutely. your mom i was uh <laughs> yeah i was i was i was pretty much also destined to be a nerd right from the start <laughs> uh because my older sister uh showed me star wars when i was three years old <laughs> and that really <laughs> it's hard not to have something like that set in your brain. And uh, from then on, I was just, you know, I heard there were, I heard it was a trilogy, blew my mind. And uh, I just, that, that began my love for sci-fi uh, and for uh, just about all of, all of nerddom. There isn't, there isn't anything uh, that I'm not, that I'm not appreciative of, you know, we all have our, our, our tastes and favorites, but uh, I just appreciate the whole nerd culture as a whole, because it's a, uh, it's part of my life, both as a fan uh, and as as someone who's performed in things. Hundred percent, and, and uh, we'll talk about it later, obviously. But I love the how there's basically a full circle moment with Star Wars, and then you also being on uh, Halloween Town with Debbie Reynolds. So, like I said, we'll we'll get into it. But that's that's a pretty cool full circle moment that uh, I'm sure you never thought would uh, would present itself. No. <laughs> so making your way into acting, um, I'm gonna guess it was commercials to start. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That was my, that was my very first, I kind of got thrown into, uh, into the mix for everything and you know, auditioned for whatever came along, but I definitely got my first job in a McDonald's commercial. Oh, okay. Hey, that's a, that's a good one to start with. But yeah. like, um, do you remember the moment I'm assuming has to do with the theater when you're like, Hey, like I, I want to try this. I think this is cool. I want to play different parts and do different things. Um, <clears throat> You know, I used to do that thing that uh, that kids do where they would uh, watch something, like watch a cartoon and then act out what, you know, what the characters were doing in the cartoon. And I just remember one day my dad uh, sort of explaining that to me. You know, I'd always gone along with into rehearsals, but never really, I was just always there. You know, there was never really an explanation of it. And it was just that one day that he saw me doing that. And he said, well, you know, you know what you're doing is that's acting. That's what I do. And if you wanted to, you could do that more for fun and do it all the time basically and you know do it like be and stuff you know you just sort of explain the concept to me and you know i just sort of i went along with it because it sounded fun yeah. uh and uh obviously i already had kind of a natural uh, uh instinct for performing and acting and uh 
you know, it was just cool to have that, have that encouraged and then have it be, uh, have it be my choice. So then like when you decided, Hey, I want to try to do this. Well, how did like the audition process like begin for you? Did you have to get an agent? Like how, how did that all, all uh, plan out? Yes. The agent uh, came first. I remember uh, our, we were living in San Diego at the time. And so it was kind of a road trip day up to, up to Los Angeles to interview with different uh, children's agents um, you know, and I just remember meeting a bunch of different people and, you know, of course being, I, I think I was five years old. So being five, I didn't really understand any of the business aspect of it. You know, they're talking about, you know, talking about percentages and whatever, and I'm just off in my own little world. Uh, and, uh, I just remember, you know, uh, the decision just came down one day from the parents that this is who we're going with. And I, I signed with an agent and I remember starting to go out on auditions for commercials and things pretty fast. Now, um, for you, it's basically like, especially at that young age, there's kids playing sports, there's kids doing like other like playing instruments. And then for you, it was just acting. So like, I'm assuming for you, it just felt kind of like normal, like another kid going to a soccer game, you were going to an audition. Yeah, it really did. From that age, uh, it was it was such a normal, normal everyday thing in my life. And uh, especially because I still I still engaged in, uh, you know, I had sports and I played soccer for a while. I played hockey for a little bit. You know, I had the same extracurricular activities that the other uh, that the other kids I was around has had. I just also had uh, another circle of people who were who were in the acting business. And so it was, you know, it was just a great opportunity to be able to make even that's all I saw it as as a kid it was just another fun thing to do and another opportunity to make more uh, friends. 100%. Now, what was that kind of like weird for your friends? Like, hey, I'm going to go like be in a commercial and then like they're going to go home and do homework. Like obviously you had homework, too. But like, was there any like a weird dynamic for that? Do you remember? There was a little bit when I still lived in San Diego because it was a less when I when I later moved to L.A. and went to school in L.A. It was it was more common. It's like, oh, you're going to an audition. Yeah, you know, big deal. You know, five or ten of my friends are going to auditions today. <laughs> and uh, but in San Diego, it was a little bit different because I had to get out of school and go, you know, make that drive up north. And uh, and it was a little more involved. So, you know, there was there was some awkwardness with the. I had friends who understood it. I had real close friends who uh, it wasn't a big deal to, but there were other kids that uh, that tried to make fun of me for it because they didn't they didn't quite get it or whatever. You know how kids are, whatever their reasoning is. <laughs> because you, yeah, what you're doing was different than what they're doing, so they must right. think hey, that's weird. Let's make fun of them. Doesn't exactly. make any sense. It's all it's always going to happen. Can't really explain it, but. Um, but then I guess you kind of had a little bit of revenge because your first ever credited role that I read was Mother's Boy. Obviously, play you played Jamie Lee Curtis's and uh, Peter Gallagher's son, which mm -hmm. pretty two uh, big names. Now, how the hell did that like come up on your radar and like the audition process for that? Because that's that's pretty good. Because you would have been like, I think not. You would have been like seven, I think, at the time, something like yeah, that. Yeah, I was six or seven. I think I was six when I made it, and seven when it came out. Um, but yeah, very young. Uh, the it, I remember it was what I remember it was an audition just like uh, just like any other you know today some some days it was a commercial some days it was a movie it just kind of you know depended on what was going on and uh you know for a, for a movie like that there's there's probably like a two or three round process at least you know you go in you know and then you you know they narrow it down you come back for a callback and then for something like that they probably would want to see you alongside the other people they're considering to see how everybody looks as a family uh that's one of that was one of my favorite things i love being matched up with different people um and uh so i just remember it was a process like any other and then um getting the job and hearing about who was involved uh you know again being so young uh i wasn't i you know i couldn't say that i was a fan of, of jamie lee curtis's most popular work at the time uh, i would not have seen halloween <laughs> at age or anything else but um she was, uh, I just remember she was so much fun to work with, even though I didn't really have a concept of who she was, you know, she was just real fun and playful and she made us feel like family right away. And I always appreciated, uh, uh, co-stars that were able to do that, who knew how to work with kids instead of ignoring kids. And she was just, she was just super fun to be around. And then obviously it wasn't until later that her, her scope of work unfolded, uh, to me, and I just kind of kept dawning on, like, wow, whoa, Jamie, Jamie Lee Curtis was my mom. Okay, that's actually pretty cool. All right, I'm into that. 
Yeah, and I, like I said, like you, you, we'll, we'll we'll get into it, but you're basically a legend magnet for like the, the names you work with. It's it's insane. Like I, I, as I was going through your IMDb, I was like, yeah, I know about Demi Reynolds, and I was like, oh, okay, first one was Jamie Lee Curtis, and then a couple years later, I was like Jim Varney. I was like, Jesus. So you you uh you lucked into these ones. That's that's amazing with the the, yeah, yeah. the co-stars you you you've had. Now with um uh, Mother's Boys, um just kind of like being a kid on set because this was your first time doing a, a full length movie. So do you remember like any, like I, I know you mentioned about Jamie, like being so nice with you guys, you kids, but like, was it basically just like you hanging out with like the other kids on the set and just like, like a little camp in a way. There was a lot of that. Yeah. Because we were all so close in age. Uh, it was during the school season. So we had to have a, 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 you know, professional tutor on set helping us with our schoolwork and everything. And uh, so it was very much just the three of us kids uh, spending a lot of time together. That's that's <laughs> that's actually where my uh, uh, my appreciation for Dungeons and Dragons came from, uh, because the oldest uh, the oldest of the siblings, Luke, he uh, was into Dungeons and Dragons, and so in between scenes and takes, uh, he would run me and uh, Colin uh, through um, through a through a little Dungeons and Dragons game. You know, we didn't use dice, we didn't use paper. It was just very much like a theater of the mind use your imagination thing but it was it was enough it got me into the concept and i and i definitely understood uh i definitely understood the idea behind it this episode is brought to you by douglas works douglas works is a full service lawn landscape and property maintenance company from lawn care to landscape design and install the gardens tree removal excavating grading junk removal window cleaning and so much more almost anything outside they've got you covered as the leaves turn, they're gearing up for fall cleanups and snow removal. You can call, text, or email to book your call service today. That's 705-868-1981 or douglasworks87 at gmail.com. Once again, you can call, text, or email to book your call services. 705-868-1981 or douglasworks87 at gmail.com. That's amazing. And like, not that I've ever been on like a movie set or anything, but like, I know between takes sometimes there's a lot of just waiting around. So that, that, that's really cool that you guys are able to kill time with something that clearly stuck with you all these years. So that that's awesome. Um, now after the movie was done, do you remember just like having the bug of like wanting to do more and like continuing? Like, was there ever a time when you're like either your mom or your dad said like, Hey, like you can stop whenever you want or Hey, you like it, keep on going. They, uh, they did present me, uh, you know, with that choice, uh, you know, every, every so often, um, you know, however things were going, they would, they were good about checking in with me on that. Uh, but no, I never, I, I remember feeling, uh, honestly at the time, like it was just another extracurricular activity. So there was not really, uh, you know, the passion, it wasn't like a passion to keep going. Uh, but it also wasn't an obligation to keep going. I just remember it was a fun thing to do. And as long as the auditions were coming and the work was coming, I, ne I never really thought about it too much. It was just another another fun thing to do. Mm -hmm. 100%. And after uh, Mother's Boys, you had a, a big five-year run. You had 13 credited roles. And I counted, I'm like, no, that's got to be wrong. I was like, there's no way you did that many. And I counted again. And one more time, I'm like, you, hey, man, you were a busy kid. So balancing at that time acting school personal life do you remember what that was like um well there was we had to uh uh this was probably around the time that we started relocating from san diego to los angeles uh because the work was was coming in so fast that we had to be closer to it um so i remember there was you know the balance of it it, it, it was all still a balance but it became you know, a transition from, uh, uh, from public school into homeschooling, um, you know, or, you know, going to different schools before then trying to find something that worked and having to, you know, move and, and, and leave friends and make new friends. That's always tough on, uh, that's always tough on anybody, no matter, <laughs> no matter how old you are. Um, but, uh, you know, I just remember being, uh, like you said, it was, it was busy. <laughs> I remember yeah. being very busy for a very long time. Yeah, no, I, like I said, I, I had to count it a couple of times to make sure I, I was counting it right. Um, so obviously uh, in between those years, um, or I guess after those, that five-year run, Halloween Town, Dylan Piper, Cromwell. So Disney Channel at that time wasn't the, um, I would say, 
the company is now with like Disney Channel original movies. I think it really started with Halloween Town. So, like, were, were, were there Disney Channel movies that you had watched as a kid before Halloween Town came on your radar? Like, I think like Luck of the Irish and like things like that were around that time. If, if I'm correct. Yeah, I remember. Uh, so I remember seeing posters and billboards for those movies for sure. But uh, to admit, um, I did not have the Disney Channel growing up. Uh, mm -hmm. So I actually did not see any of those movies and I wasn't very familiar with uh, with, you know, the Disney Channel programming at all. Um, I had never uh, I had never worked for Disney before, you know, as a child. And so it was it was in a lot of ways. It was a brand new experience. Um, especially because, uh, you know, I think I can't remember when uh, rumors of a sequel started, but, you know, that was also very exciting. It, it was, you know, like you said, it was a very, it was a new time for the Disney Channel. So it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like, oh, you know, a Disney Channel movie opportunity, you know, that's huge. It was, it was, it was, you know, okay, another, another movie. It's a Disney movie. And uh, I mean, not being familiar with Disney, it was uh, uh, like with a lot of stuff, it started like a, like a job like any other um and didn't really uh become what it is until until a little later now with um with these auditions like with the auditions for halloween town the first one do you remember it like being any different than the other ones because i feel like not that the other things that you were in weren't like big huge but like i think disney channel i feel like it would have a different process maybe, maybe not at the time maybe it was still too early but like did you have like more callbacks than you did before did you have uh, read throughs with people that you hadn't done before like with like people they're still trying to get on the movie i would say yeah they did it there was definitely more like rounds of narrowing narrowing people down that i remember from a lot of projects before um i don't remember them doing a lot of matching up and having me read with other people um but uh yeah, I definitely remember at least at least three auditions before they really finally said, "Okay, we're going to narrow it down and have you meet with the writers and stuff like that." Um, and it, it, this one was cool because, like you had mentioned with Mother's Boys, like just having the other kids around was like such a big thing for you. So obviously, I know Kimberly is older than you, and then Emily's younger than you. But filming the movie and having those two around must have played a huge part in like just being comfortable and like just hanging. Felt like you're just hanging out on set like the other ones, right? Oh, absolutely. It was, it was just a big, uh, it was a big hangout. Um, you know, uh, especially doing, you know, when you, when you get to do a project that is on location and you have to travel somewhere, uh, different than where you live. I mean, it's a lot of, it feels like a vacation, uh, and you take opportunity of those, um, of those, of the downtime, like on the weekends and stuff, we would, we would go, uh, we would go visit different tourist spots around Portland and St. Helens during the first one and just kind of, you know, spend a lot of time together off camera, uh, uh, bonding, uh, because it, it worked for the chemistry on camera. And you know, we really did. We spent so much time together, uh, that we really did start to feel like family. And that was really nice. Now St. Helens obviously now has like a month long spirit of Halloween town, uh, like event. We'll get to that. But like St. Helens then did just like feel like a, like an, another set or another place to you. I know you probably hadn't been there before, but I'm sure it wasn't anything special at the time. Uh, no, we didn't think so. I mean, not that, I mean, let me take that. I mean, obviously every place is special, but it wasn't, it was not as, as, as big of a deal as it is now. Uh, I think cause this was even before twilight filmed there and some other things. Um, but yes, it was just, a, it was just another nice, uh, small town that the production people, uh, absolutely transformed into Halloween town and did an impressive job with that. Uh, and with the residents as well, because like everybody turned out to be extras and to, you know, hang out and be around. And it was just such a uh, it was a really it was a really nice little community. Uh, and then so to see it grow into like like a really popular, nice little community now uh, has been really fun. No, that's amazing. Uh, we talked about this before, but or I brought it up. But Debbie Reynolds now at the time i and I'll, I'll, i know there's a story you've told and i i would like you to retell it here but at the time did you know who she was specifically um i think i knew the name yeah. uh because my mom uh, growing up with my mom she is a huge movie buff and so there was like she would show me classic movies or i would just you know hear about names uh you know they were always floating around so i I remember knowing the name Debbie Reynolds, but I don't, I don't think I actually saw any of her movies at the time. Right. Uh, I just knew who she was and, and knew that she was uh, uh, Carrie Fisher's mother. 
Well, and then, okay, and that's what I was going to ask. So um, she went around and introduced herself in a specific way. So can you can you retell that story? <laughs> sure. Um, she would uh, assume that most of the young uh, cast and crew didn't, uh, didn't know who she was as an actor. And so she would go around introducing herself to people as Princess Leia's mother. She would say, hi, how are you? I'm Princess Leia's mother. Nice to meet you. And uh, when it when it got to be her introduction to Emily, who I think was maybe six, maybe seven at the time, did not know who Debbie Reynolds was, did not know who Princess Leia was. Um, and so Debbie goes up to her and says, uh, well, hi, nice to meet you. I'm, I'm Princess Leia's mother. Do you, you know, do you know who Princess Leia is? And Emily shook her head and Debbie says, oh, well then I'm just a crazy, crazy old lady. And she, and she went on to her next introduction. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Amazing. I mean, and it makes sense that obviously Emily wouldn't have known, but I, that's, that's such a great response. Now, working with her, even though you didn't like know exactly how huge she was, like, what was that like? It had to be awesome. It was, yeah. Um, because um, she made, you know, she made herself feel just like family right away. You know, it was there was a big difference. It wasn't like, oh, here comes here comes Debbie Reynolds. Everybody, you know, be on your best behavior. Here comes Debbie Reynolds. You know, ooh, it's, it's a big deal. It's Debbie Reynolds. It was just she just strolled right in and she was grandma, you know, and she was ever she wasn't just even just our grandma. She was everybody's grandma. And she just uh, uh, she she was so close with us. She didn't um, she did, wasn't the type who would go off and disappear in between takes uh, and not, you know, go, go to her trailer and not deal with us. Like she was right there hanging out with everybody. Uh, I remember, I remember when I was, uh, when I first flew up to Portland, uh, you know, to start filming the first one, uh, she was, she was right on my flight, just a few rows down flying with everybody else. And, hanging out in baggage claim, waiting for her bags. And, you know, I'm listening to people next to me going, I think that's, uh, is that Debbie Reynolds? I think that's Debbie Reynolds. I'm just kind of sitting there like, yeah, yeah, it's Debbie Reynolds. <laughs> that's my grandma. <laughs> it's my grandma. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, and, yeah like special. even just like watching her on TV, I remember even as a kid, and like me and my fiance actually just rewatched the Halloween Towns uh, this, this weekend. Like she felt like a grandma to everybody that just like watched the movies as well. It's, it's crazy what an effect that she had on people. It's yeah amazing she was uh she was uh, absolutely perfect for that role i can't think of a, a single other person who could do uh who could do aggie cromwell justice i love it um now once you were done halloween town and it obviously had, it premiered did you was i guess there wouldn't have been an actual premiere itself correct because it was a disney channel movie uh no we had a we had a uh we had an actual premiere i think okay. it was on the uh the disney the disney studio lot uh, in one of their big screening rooms. Um, I, I don't remember if everybody, I don't remember if Debbie came to that. I just, I just do remember, you know, again, it was, uh, it didn't feel like the biggest deal at the time. It was oh, another job, you know, another job finished. Let's go to the, you know, let's go to the premiere with people and watch it and have fun and see our, see our friends again. That's what it was about for me. It was just, Oh, I get to see and see and hang out with my friends again. Um, and, uh, uh, but we were, you know, we had a, we still had a really good time, you know, it was, uh, we didn't know how huge it was going to be obviously, but it definitely felt, it definitely felt like something pretty special watching it. Was for, did, was Halloween Town just supposed to be a one-off at the time? There was no, at the time we were making it, there was no discussion of a sequel. There was no, you know, like you, like we were talking about Disney Channel original movies were still pretty, uh, pretty new. Um, so you know, like, I don't, I don't remember if, uh, what was the, uh, Xenon, the future girl. Yep. Uh, I don't know if that was, you know, if that existed or had a sequel to it yet or anything like that. So it wasn't, uh, it definitely wasn't something we were expecting while we were making the first one. It, it happened sometime, some, some months before, uh, we shot the second one that, that the rumors really started flying around. Yeah, so I mean, I I I could be uh, wrong, but Halloween Town, um, Calbar's Revenge may be the first Disney Channel sequel. Like you said, Xenon Zeon might be might be it, but it'd be it'd be really close either way. That's which is really cool to say that you're a part of that. Yeah, because again, like we mentioned a few times that that wasn't that wasn't the behemoth 
that Disney Channel is now. They didn't. That wasn't. Right. Let's do another sequel. Let's do another one. Let's do another one. That's that. That wasn't normal. Now in between Halloween Towns, you had seven credited roles, and just a couple of highlights were Felicity, Treehouse Hostage, which we're gonna get into, uh, The Practice, which a couple episodes, Seventh Heaven, a couple episodes. Uh, again, just busy. Now with Treehouse Hostage, uh, you played a character that um, had a criminal hideout where he escaped jail and he needed a place to hide out and he ended up in your tree house and you kept him hostage. So let's get into that because the fact that, uh, Jim Varney, obviously if people don't know Ernest, I mean, however many specials and movies and things he did as Ernest was, was insane. So what was that, uh, that filming like for you? That, uh, that was some of the most fun I've ever had in my life. Uh, honestly, were those couple of weeks making that movie, um, because growing up, uh, I absolutely was a huge Ernest fan. Uh, I'd seen almost all his movies. Uh, I multiple times, you know, I, I, I just I would see anything that Jim Varney did because he was so iconic to me. Uh, and I believe he was already attached to Treehouse Hostage before I even auditioned for it. Um, so that made the audition process very exciting. It was, you know, let's let's work really hard and really, you know, hustle to be in this movie with Jim Varney. That would be great. Um, and again, it was, a, you know, it was a couple of rounds. I think for that one, they did they did match me up with some other kids to, you know, see how they see how the little gang of kids look together. And um, then I just remember when uh, when I got the call that I got that job. I mean, that was that was I was. I was so excited, uh, you know, to be, to be working with Ernest. It was definitely one of the, uh, some of the best news I've ever gotten. I was watching the trailer for it and I was trying to find it, but I cannot find the full movie, but the trailer just gives such a early two thousands vibe. Like the, uh, the voiceover guy for the trailer, it just, it just looked like such a perfect kids movie. I wish I was old enough then to have watched it. Cause if it was early two thousands, I probably would have been like, I guess, I guess it would have been pretty close, like five or six, but no, it, it just looked like a fun movie to, to not only watch but obviously to film as well and clearly uh you you agree so no that, that that's pretty cool that you're able to have a, just like that little chunk in, of time to work with someone like jim varney and yeah. timmy timmy the character literally reminds me of me as a kid just like the the trying to get out of doing work and coming up with like any way to do it or your own way to do it that literally was me as a kid and I, that's why when i watched it i was like i need to watch this movie because it's it was me just without the criminal it, it was uh i'm yeah i'm not sure where you can find it these days i remember it was one of those things that got bounced around it was an independent movie it was like an independent kids movie that was made uh and i think it they they put it out on they just it was it was one of those straight to video things uh mm. at first and then i think disney found it it may have been on disney plus at one point but um yeah that was a movie that uh uh that we had a lot of fun with that we you know took it took a while for it to find uh find its audience at first but um you know as un unfortunately sadly is the case sometimes uh but yeah we all just we all just had a great time i mean jim jim was great with us and uh, uh everyone else who's in the movie was was awesome and we just got to do all the fun the treehouse set that they built was pretty incredible um so yeah it was just it was a great experience it, Timmy gave me Dennis the Menace vibes for sure, just from that trailer. Yeah. So, um, uh, getting into the sequel for Halloween Town, like you'd mentioned, like a few months before you guys started filming, you heard, "Hey, we're gonna come back to do a new one." For you, was it no brainer? I'm a hundred percent in. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I Dylan was uh, was a was a character uh, that I had so much fun creating because there was so much of myself in there. It was it was uh, maybe less of a character, more of a hybrid. Let's let's call him. Um, and, uh, I had so much fun just sort of, just sort of falling into that role that, uh, I, I was, yeah, I was so happy to have the chance to, to play him more, you know, maybe, yeah, it was like a year and a half later that we started filming and, you know, I'd matured and I assumed Dylan had matured. And so it was just, it was just a really fun thing to come back to. Now I, there wasn't a huge chunk of time between the two, but I mean, for a, a young boy, it a hundred percent was because puberty, because it looked like you grew six feet tall from the first one to the second one. Like it would look like almost obviously you could look the same, but like you look like a completely different person in, in a way. Like it's just like taller voice deeper. And it was, again, it was just like, I don't know what three, four years, maybe. 
Yeah, yeah, I think it was it was that difference between I was twelve in the in the first one, and I think I was maybe you know thirteen and a half or fourteen in the second one. So yeah, that's a that's a huge difference as a at that age. Yeah. So and like you said, you felt like that Dylan was just kind of like a hybrid of of Jay. So for you, how did it change Dylan in the first one to Dylan in the second one? Like obviously, you kind of had to bring a different a, a uh, not grown up, but like an older version of him to that one. So like, how did that process work for you? Was it easy? Um, it, it was, uh, I mean, it, it, it felt easy because, uh, I had, I, I felt like I had made Dylan so much my own, you know, and like I said, there are a lot of similarities. So a lot of just what I, you know, had taken with me, uh, uh, I had Dylan take with him too, you know, which is, uh, you know, maybe some maturing, but more, I think more importantly, um, trying to become more comfortable with yourself. You know, Dylan never tried to outgrow that nerd thing. He never tried to be cool. He just got older and just, in, you know, increased his knowledge and just got more more confident <laughs> in how nerdy he was and how much he was right and how much Arbor Day is awesome. Um, <laughs> so, and so that's really what it felt like was just was Dylan uh, was a more confident Dylan. Like, yeah, this is who I am. And I've gone through, you know, puberty for the most part. I'm 14 now. And um, I'm a man. I'm a man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I love <laughs> but, that. Now, was this back in St. Helens as well? Uh, the second one we did in Vancouver. Right. Cause um, you never, uh, you Dylan never went to Halloween town in the second one. I don't think I can't remember. Uh, Dylan was, I think there was that, um, maybe I'm getting my movies mixed up, but the return or the, uh, Calabar's revenge was the, uh, the one where everybody turned gray. Right. Yes. I didn't, I don't think Dylan ever went. Dylan was always at home. I remember there was a there was like a scene. I think there was a scene at the end where I was in Halloween Town and I helped. I, that's right. Yeah, I, I, I got oh at the help. gym at the high school gym when the the door thing was open when they had to go through. I'm pretty sure that's when it was. Like when there was that door in between. I think. Yeah, yeah, I remember that too. Yeah. I, again, I literally just watched these and I already forget. When you when you <laughs> see them when you see all four back to back to back to back, you you like like you just did. You blend them together. Yeah, but, of course. So, yeah. Um. Not obviously. I not being in Halloween town, the town in the movie, would you say you had like Dylan had more on screen time in this one, about the same or maybe a little bit less? Um, I, I felt like it was, it was, it was more or less the same. Um, it was just a little bit different because instead of the three of us kids running around together, you know, on the one hand you had, you had Marnie and uh, Luke and on the other hand, you had Dylan and Sophie running around in the mortal world doing things. So it, um, you know, it felt a little different because we had, you know, when we filmed that first one, we had so much fun, the three of us just running around St. Helens and, and, and doing all the things um, that it was a little bit of a, it was a different experience, but uh, it, it felt like it was, it felt like we were more or less the same uh, yeah. as far as I mean, content wise, I guess. That that was, I, I felt like that one was, um a cool one because of how how dark it was compared to the first one it was completely different and like i know there wasn't many years between the first and second but like it kind of felt like as as we grew up watching it it got a little bit darker for that age that was watching i don't know i i, I really i really like that how it was a, a definitely a darker feel it was a lot yeah. less disney channel that's for sure yeah no I, I can see that yeah um and then again was it the same thing disney channel lot for the premiere afterwards um, was there a premiere for that one? I don't remember. Um, I remember though that, uh, Kim, Kimberly, whether there was a premiere or not, Kimberly would have a little party, uh, at her house when it actually went on TV for the first time. So we'd all gather at her place. Our, our families became friends and we had a lot of the same friends through acting. And so it was just a fun little, a fun That's little cool. group to get together every, every couple of years as a tradition. That's really cool. It's like a family reunion. Yeah. Except if you're watching yourself on TV. That no, that that's really cool. So yeah. then um in between the second Halloween down and the third one, you were featured on my fa my favorite Disney Channel show as a kid. I don't know if you remember, you were Soda Kid on an episode of Lizzie McGuire. Now with with the like, uh Disney Channel, obviously that was Disney Channel as well. Was was there a thing that because you're in a Disney Channel movie, you had more of a connection to be like cameo or be featured in the show Disney Channel or was it just like another audition doesn't matter if you had that um I was I was familiar with I didn't watch the show but I was familiar with it because uh I um I was 
because of my circle of acting friends, I was fairly good friends with Hillary. Uh, and so it was something it, that was a fun thing to watch actually was to see her just kind of go from being Hillary and another person that I knew to, to being Lizzie and having that blow up. Um, and uh, she was super great. And I got to be friends with uh, uh, Lillane outside of that show as well. And so really that was more of a uh, more of an opportunity to uh, see some friends of mine. Um, I did get really excited about it. And I remember that was a fairly, because it was such a small part, it was a fairly short audition process. They literally, you know, had us come in and go in and read the lines. And I think they even, they even just told us on that very same day who got the part. And then, you know, I had to come back later on in the week for, you know, how a couple hours, however long it took to, uh, to do that. And, uh, but no, that was, that was really fun. Cause it was just kind of, kind of walking on and being a, wacky character and you know hey hey hillary hey Lillian, good to see you guys and yeah. uh and having some fun and then calling it a day so you know at, the, at, at that point uh in my career i guess there was a lot of stuff that um that still felt like uh you know a lot of stuff felt like just another job but because of the the friends that i had made uh and the experiences i was having and that i was becoming more of an adult and like I remember that was one of the first jobs that I went to by myself you know I drove myself my parents weren't with me that sort of thing uh and so it just become every every job uh became a whole new experience for whatever reason I was doing something that I had never done before in some aspect yeah and then uh that, that that's actually really cool that's and that's such a interesting time just to be a human in general let alone like being an actor like you said like it was so different now hey you're going by yourself this is all you you don't need it no one's gonna be holding your hand so that's no no that's really interesting and you're also in uh two episodes of that 70s show as well like i going through your imdb it's like so many i'm like oh whoa okay like as i'm like hitting each each uh each uh part I thought that was uh, yeah, I've been i've been pretty lucky i've had a lot of uh, a lot of fun gigs and that 70s show is uh definitely up there with one of my favorites um it's it was one of the uh well the only well the only job that i can think of at this point um that i was a i was a fan of the project before i was part of the project like i remember watching that 70s show from episode one when it came out as a uh, uh, i forget how old i was when that show started but um, I was always into the 70s because of the music and the styles and everything as a kid. And so it was just perfect. It's like, oh, sitcom about the 70s. That's great. And, and, I, and I just never missed an episode uh, uh, after it came out. And so that became something that you know, I would start to fantasize and go, hey, you know, I'm an actor. Maybe I could someday be on that 70s show. Wouldn't that be fun if I could be on that 70s show? And like, oh, I bet I could play like a young version of one of the guys on that 70s show. And the next thing I know, I'm getting that call for that audition uh, where it's that 70s show flashback and they wanted me to come in and read for Hyde. And um, there was a couple rounds of that, you know, mixing and matching with some of the other kids. And uh, it was just such a fun process to go in and uh, do this impression and do this character that I love um, uh, over and over. And then and then again, get the news that uh, uh, that I got that job uh, and, to, and to get to do it multiple times, too. Like that was uh, yeah, that's one of that's been one of my favorite gigs. Yeah, sure. I was gonna mention that it was pretty cool. That wasn't just like a one and done. Like you got to do it twice. Plus, you'd mentioned about liking like the old, like back in the day, and then you were even farther back in the day because you're playing the younger version of Hyde. So no, that's that's pretty cool that you're basically you're able to fulfill like one little check off, like let's say like the bucket list, like yeah. something that you were able to watch and be like, I want to be on there, and then you're able to ma make it happen. So hey, yeah, manifestation's cool. a real thing, man. It, it really is. Um, and then, of course, Halloween Town High. Uh, between two and three, was it the same as one and two? You guys just weren't sure if there's going to be another one, or did you did you think, hey, we're done now? Um, yeah, we just weren't sure. We just weren't sure. It was uh, it was one of those feelings where you come back and do it again. You're like, is this you know, is this our, you know, we're, we're pretty lucky to do this again. So let's have fun with this, and you know, let's uh, let's make it make it fun, make it special. Um, and, uh, no, I don't think, I don't think at any time during the filming of, uh, of that, we, we were expecting that. And so to have it come along and to, and to play those characters again and to further, you know, deep dive into that, like that was, it was, you know, Hey, it's, it's a trilogy. This is great. You know, get to fulfill, I guess that's another thing you can fulfill too, is that whole, you know, get to be in a, in a trilogy. 
And we were talking about how um, screen time wise for Dylan between one and two, I feel like this one Dylan was featured a lot more. Would you agree? I, I would agree. Yeah. 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 I felt, it felt like uh, um, if that, that felt great, like not only that, but um, to share that with the ensemble of the other, of the other characters and actors, like I felt like everybody uh, got a nice little spotlight in that. So it, it, it was a lot, I felt like it was a lot different just being like a viewer because again, the first one you, it's a three of you, the second one's a two of you. And then this one all of a sudden, boom, like you said, you have an ensemble, all of a sudden it's like you're one and you have like six other stars that are with you seem something like a, a lot of the time, especially like a lot of time in the movie. So no, that one, that one felt um, a lot different for uh, Dylan, like I said, screen wise and screen time wise. And then I talked about how number two was darker and I read that like uh, Disney channel, like received criticism for that. So it's uh, that they um, made this one more family friendly. Did you feel like two was too dark and they needed to like move back a little bit? I, uh, I honestly never heard that. Um, that's, that's tough because there's, I mean, you know, you watch Disney, Disney plus now and there are, you know, uh, you know, th there are some things that get pretty dark and there's the movies on there that are, that have cursing, uh, in them sometimes. And, uh, so it's hard to think about like, you know, you have to go back to like, what was it? 2001 standards and go, okay, is this dark for kids? And, um, you know, I, I honestly never heard that. I never heard that they, that anybody took issue with that. Uh, it, it makes sense because the third one does feel, did feel like a lot more, uh, a lot more colorful and family oriented than the second one. Literally um, too. It literally was more colorful. It was. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I know, but I never, I know that's funny. I never put those two things together that that was, that that was the reason why. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm telling hey, it's, it's, it's the things you learn. And in this one, um, again you were growing yourself and then dylan was growing as well was there any significant change you felt for yourself that you had to bring to dylan in this one um this was uh yeah this was definitely this was definitely the first one uh where like i was like i was saying before i was doing jobs on my own now uh, i traveled we did the we did the second or the third and fourth ones in salt lake city and so I traveled there on my own and, you know, was living there on my own and taking care of myself. Um, and uh, so that was that was different for me. Um, but being a couple of years ahead of where where Dylan was, I think age wise, you know, obviously that was something that I couldn't that I couldn't bring to him. He still had that sense of, of you know, being home and being with family and stuff like that. Um, so that that was definitely where Dylan started to feel like a little bit more of a character and a little bit less like me. Uh, cause I had to imagine his development, like a couple of years behind. Um, but you know, still, still taking, still taking that confidence right along, you know, and, um, by the third movie, obviously, you know, the, the relationship, the family relationship between me and Kimberly and Emily is just that Judith as well has just gotten stronger. And so we just feel like more, you know, we feel that family bond and we feel like that, that, really comes across uh when you watch the movies too and so that's oh, that's another very rewarding thing absolutely and this is um more uh, less of a question just a fact but like you had some pretty cool uh new co-stars in this one obviously lucas gable grable from uh later on high school musical and then clifton davis like a guy who's been in some pretty big things uh back in the day so um as they went on you guys got some pretty cool uh, coasters just like moving along each movie. So no, that, 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 that one, that one's probably one of my favorite ones. Number one easily, but I think Halloween high, uh, Halloween town high has got to be up there. This episode is brought to you by CG electric. If there's one thing I'm not good at, I mean, one of many it's uh, dealing with any electrical at my house besides maybe using the light switch, but that's where CG Electric comes in. Whether it be both residential or commercial, CG Electric is your go-to. You can find them on Google just by searching CG Electric as well as Instagram at CG underscore electric underscore company. Again, find them on Google by searching CG Electric and on Instagram at CG underscore electric underscore company. Let them know that Quinn sent you. Um, number four. Now, elephant in the room, obviously, no Kimberly. No Sarah Kimberly. Paxton was Marnie in this one. And I had read um, that Kimberly was available. She just never heard from, from Disney Channel. Um, with, with, with you, what was that like, having to 
completely like completely change who you're working with because that 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 was a big deal at the time. I remember even being a kid being like not no no offense to Sarah Paxson, but I'm like, who's this? This isn't Marnie. Right. Yeah, that was uh that was a tough one because I remember everything was uh was already rolling. You know, I had like read the script and there there was they were very sure that they wanted to go ahead with that fourth movie and I think um I'm I'm still not I'm still not 100 percent sure what the reason is that Kimberly wasn't able to do it. Um, but I just remember hearing the news that she wasn't, uh, and I just you know pressed on because at that point you know I I think I was I was 20 maybe, uh, and so I was definitely an adult. Definitely didn't have uh, my parents around with me, and so there was an element of that that was like, well, you know, that's really sad that we're not going to have Kimberly, and you know I I don't I don't know why. Uh, we don't, but um, we got to be a professional and we got to do, we got to do the job. Um, And, uh, and I went ahead with it and it was, it was an adjustment for sure. Um, Sarah, Sarah is great. (laughs) She was really fun to work with. Um, And it was just, it it became just a different process. You know, we didn't, because, you know, looking back to the first one, our families weren't around. So they weren't, we weren't like doing weekend activities and bonding and pretending to be brother and sister and stuff like that. We were just kind of two professional adults uh, with these characters um, acting like we were brother and sister. And uh, she was honestly really, really, really great to work with. Yeah. A hundred percent. Were you, were you too far in, like how far into it were you the process of coming back for that one when you found out there'd be no Kimberly? Um, gosh, how far was that? I think what they had done was, uh, this was the one where I think they weren't sure that maybe I was getting, they thought I might have been getting too old for the part. Hmm. And so, um, they wanted me to come in and they wanted to take pictures of me and, you know, send them up to the producers and stuff and just make sure that I still, uh, looked the part. Um, and what's yourself? Uh, that is such a, we- that's so weird. It was, it was, it was a little, it was a little unnerving. Uh, Cause I really just, I mean, obviously after playing the character for so long, I was in love with the character and, and uh, didn't want anybody else to play the character. Uh, so, um, but I got through that. I went in and took the pictures and they said that was fine. And I think that's, that's about the time um, where I heard that, uh, that Sarah was coming in instead of Kimberly. So it was pretty much already, I had already agreed to it. I was already, you know, things, things were already, things were already rolling pretty fast. You, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to uh, get into it, but would there, do you think if you weren't as far along as you were, there would have been a chance you wouldn't have done it without Kimberly? Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, I never really, I never really thought about that too much because it was, because again, I didn't, uh, I didn't know the re that, you know, I wasn't told the reasons why Kimberly couldn't make it. Um, I was just told that, uh, that we were getting Sarah instead. And um, yeah, I don't know. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't say. Uh, no, that, and that's fair. Like, I, you, like you said, you were already far into it that it's kind of hard to think back now. Like in your, you had the mindset of we're, we're just chugging along. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I think I was working, I think I was working a lot less at that age. And, uh, there was a lot of pressure, uh, you know, from my agent probably to just kind of, to, to, to go ahead and, and take the job and do it anyway, even though Kimberly wasn't going to be involved. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's probably what was, what was mostly behind that at the time. Uh, but you know, it, it, she was, she was very much missed. Obviously the energy, uh, was missed. It wasn't quite the same. It was a different, it was a different sort of energy, but still, you know, we still try to do a good job. <laughs> hey, and, and, and Sarah's not a bad person to replace her if she had to be replaced. I mean, at the time, she had Darcy's Wildlife, Aquamarine. So she had she had a good little resume for herself at the time. So again, if she had to be replaced, I guess like Sarah was not was not a horrible option. So yeah. no, that no, it, I, I, I could see what you're saying. Um, and then we're talking about how like the last two movies, Dylan kind of got more and more into it. This one, he was 100% more featured in it. Now, did you have to, especially with the pressure of not only your agent, but now that you you probably had in your mindset, hey, they think I'm a little too old for me. So how did you go into playing Dylan this time? It had to be completely different, no? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I really I really took the uh, uh, took the possibly too old thing to heart and made I you know, I remember I just remember having a lot more uh, trying to have a lot more fun with it, you know, trying to make Dylan less serious 
and uh, or at least like uh, uh, myself as the actor, less serious and more, you know, playing to the comedy of things. Um, and I think that that maybe helped. That certainly made me made me feel better about all that. Um, but it still was. Uh, but there was. I still. I still tried to make sure there was a lot of myself uh, in there as well. I love. I love that. Um, and then obviously this. That was the final one for possibly ever. Maybe there'll be another one. Any insight on a fifth one? Is that even in like the minds of anybody? Uh, not that I've heard uh, officially in any way uh at all and i wish uh and i wish it was uh because i think especially with nowadays you see a lot you know there was that we had a hocus pocus sequel after however many years and uh, i just know how how much people still love halloween town and i think that it would be i i certainly wasn't wouldn't hesitate uh to come back and do it in any in any capacity i think disney plus is a great uh you know format and for something yeah. like that 100% like I mean I'm 27 and I still watch all the Halloween towns every year so that just shows like the the impact that has on I had and has on just people that were like adults that were kids back then would you say I mean you probably don't know but maybe the higher ups it could be a little less um like scared about doing it not having Debbie anymore um I I, yeah, I mean, I could maybe see that. Uh, I know that Debbie was a huge, uh, was a huge part of it. It was especially, especially when, you know, the movies were first coming out, that it was a great way to, to draw in the adults as well as the kids. Um, so I can see maybe, I can see maybe where they would feel a bit of that would be lost. But, you know, when you look at it, there's been, there's been such an amount of time uh, since that first one came out that a lot of the people who were, you know, who were kids when it came out, they're adults now and they've got families. Um, and so I feel like there would still be enough for, uh, for everybody to, uh, uh, to enjoy. Cause it, one of the most rewarding things about it has been when, you know, fa when family, you know, back in the day, it was, uh, you know, it was kids coming up to me and saying, Oh, Hey, you were in Halloween town. You know, I love that movie. Um, and then as the years went on, it be, you know, the people became older and they would start coming out to me with their children. They would say, Hey, you were in Halloween town. I watched that as a kid. I watched that with my kids, It's a whole tradition. And, uh, I just love that. Oh, no, no. It, it throws me off seeing, I follow, I just started following Emily on Instagram. It throws me off seeing her have kids because sure. she's older than me, but me watching it feels like she's younger than me. So it, it, it throws me off not even knowing her personally. So that must really take you for a, for a whirl. Knowing it her. does, yeah, especially because I hadn't I hadn't seen her in so in so so long. She I she wasn't in the fourth movie, so um, when I saw her at the Spirit of Halloween Town Festival a couple of years ago, it was I don't even want to think about how many years it had been since I had seen her last. So to see her, you know, grown up with her kids, uh, it was yeah, it was definitely a trip. Uh, but I mean, I'm so happy for her because those are some cool kids, and she's uh, oh, she's yeah. doing so good. They look like triplets, the three of them together. The two, the, they look just like her. Yeah, yeah, it's, for sure. It, it, it's 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 crazy. Um, so spirit of Halloween Town. Let, let's get into that. So, like, obviously, St. Helens became what it is now, basically a real life Halloween Town. So, so what what's that been like for you going going back there and like being part of such a massive festival? It's, uh, it's surreal, honestly. Um, the amount of people that, that show up to that festival, uh, and hang out at that festival, it's, uh, it's, it's just mind blowing. Uh, the, the distances that people travel, uh, to that festival is also something pretty amazing. They, they, they usually keep a map on site with like a bunch of push pins. They say, Hey, you know, put a pin in where you come from. And, uh, there's just, there's there's pins all over the world. People come to see uh, Spirit of Halloween Town, and it is it's 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 um it's just extra wild because you're there and the town has been transformed, so it feels like it did. Uh, you know, back when we were making the movie, they've got a I think they've got a permanent uh, uh, jack o' lantern in on, in honor of Debbie Reynolds now in the town square, and so it's pretty much year round Halloween Town over there in a lot of ways, and. Uh, the the people that come out and and hang out are just the coolest you know i've seen uh i've seen halloween town tattoos uh i've seen halloween town cosplays i saw i saw a little dude uh you know walking in dressed like how i exactly how i was dressed from the Whoa, first oh that's weird <laughs> yeah yeah it was something else uh wow. it's 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 a 
it's a really great experience to be able to have that uh, and look forward to it every year. Well, and I'm pretty sure, correct me if I'm wrong, you and your wife went to it at one point together, right? Yes, uh, we uh, uh, we got married uh, just a little over three years ago, and she has been my uh, my traveling companion for the Spirit of Halloween Town Festival since then. That must have been really cool to share that with her, because like yeah. obviously you obviously didn't know her at the time, so to be able to show her what like basically it was like when you were a kid, that must have been really cool. Yeah, no, we have a lot of fun together. It's a it's a trip. It's a trip down memory, and she you know she grew up watching the Halloween Town movies. That's so weird. Day. So <laughs> yeah, I love, I love that. Um, now before I let you go, I want to get into like, just like the theater and stuff, because you've taken more of a backseat from, uh, TV and movies and stuff and way more into the theater. You really dove into it. And then uh, of course created your own entertainment company. So theater for you, what, what are you doing nowadays with that? Um, nowadays I've gotten involved, uh, here. I live in, uh, Grand Forks, North Dakota with my wife and, uh, I have gotten involved with the theater community here. Um, I did a couple of shows, uh, over the last year at a place called the fire hall, uh, which is one of the local theaters, a couple actually. Um, and, um, I had such a good time with them and I love the environment so much and made some new friends that I, you know, I sort of said, Hey, you know, how do I go about, uh, you know, pitching a project of my own that I would like to direct? Uh, cause directing is a, is a huge passion of mine. And, um, I ended up, uh, I, I pitched a couple of ideas and they went with a show that's called, uh, the uh, dark heart of Poe, um, which is sort of a journey through the mind of Edgar Allan Poe. Um, we read some of his uh, poems and short stories and act them out. And uh, it's a very, it's a very dark and spooky, uh, perfect for, uh, perfect for the time of the season uh, kind of show. And um, it's just great to, to uh, continue to be involved with that community because I've made a lot of great friends and they, uh, I moved here about two years ago and they've really made me feel at home. I love that. So like theater season, are you, do you like finish one and then all of a sudden next, all right, let's go. We got the next one ready. Let's start fill or not filming. Let's start rehearsing. Let's start getting our actors in. Like what's that process like? Um, I, uh, it's tough for me to do back to back shows because I, uh, have my Dungeons and Dragons in between, um, with rehearsals. Uh, I do Dungeons and Dragons some weeknights and with rehearsals being on weeknights, it's very hard to, do both at the same time sometimes so i kind of have to do a show and then take a break so i can play D D for uh for a little while and then you know wait for the wait for a, a show that sounds exciting to come along and then go through that process again so um yeah i gotta i gotta leave room for both i love i love that uh quickly uh can you talk about the the entertainment company that you you co-founded Yes, uh, um, uh, ZFO Entertainment uh, was created a number of years ago of my friend Bradley Pierce, and uh, that we created that to be an exclusively uh, sci-fi um, entertainment company. So we would uh, we had a, a short uh, web series on uh, YouTube called Andy the Android Dick, um, <laughs> and then we uh, we had a news show called Z minus sixty, where we would go uh, visit. Uh, uh, conventions and, and do interviews with some of the guests and uh, and take pictures of some cosplayers and it was a uh, we had a we had a real fun time with that uh, working on that it was just a uh, it 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 felt like a big sci fi party for uh, the couple of years that we had that going. That's awesome. Um, last thing, I swear before I let you go, I've said that a couple of times, but no dream dream role. You could put yourself into any TV show or movie that's already been uh, been around. Um, you know, I gotta be honest, um, with the amount of Star Trek that there is these days, I would, uh, I, I oh man, I would give just about anything to have a role on, uh, on any of the new Star Trek shows that there are, uh, cause I'm a huge Trekkie, so. <laughs> Love that. And would you be a brand new character you would, you would prefer? Uh, that's tough because I know like with shows like strange new worlds, they're bringing back some of the, uh, some of the older characters. It'd be fun to, uh, it'd be fun to get to try to play bones or something like that. Yeah. But you know, I would, I wouldn't say no to a brand new character as well. I'm i uh, I'm j I would just be so, uh, uh, happy to be a part of that. I don't think I would be too picky with what I was offered. No, no, I, I don't blame you. Well, Jay, thank you so much for coming on here. Um, you wasted an hour of your life to talk to a little idiot like me. So thank you for letting me berate you with silly questions. You're awesome. And this is 
everything that I could have hoped for having you on. So again, thank you so much. Well, thank you. No, this has been a, uh, this has been a pleasure. It's been really great to talk to you and, and revisit some of these, uh, uh, some of these old stories. I think now rewatching Halloween towns are going to feel a little bit different. Just knowing, Hey, I was able to talk to Jay. Like it, it it's It's going to feel a little different, but in, in such a, such a good way. So again, thank you so much, Jay. Um, good luck on your production. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to hear about more that you have once you're, uh, you get, uh, done with your D&D nights when you start to work on the next one afterwards. So again, yeah. Thank you so much, Jane. Uh, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Talk to you soon. And that was the Quaid Bar Show.